Thank you very much, Agnes. Good morning, everybody. I can see Irene, I can see Gilbert, I can see Agnes. Thank you very much for tuning in and I want to greet you all who have tuned in, who have logged in in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our topic is the Messiah, the everlasting light. Jesus, the everlasting light. Let us pray together. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the gift of a new day. And we thank you for the gift of life, but also the opportunity that you grant us to be able to come before you. And we want to give you all the praise and we want to give you all the glory. You alone are good as we share together from your word. Speak to us. And Father, help us to be open to receive from you. And let this word cause a transformation in our lives, in our families, in your church, and in this nation. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Blandina, I can see you. Betty, I can see you. Diana, Flavia, Esther, Aston, Annette, Anna, Audrey, I mean, thank you very much for tuning in. Messiah, the everlasting light, simply made, made simple. We are talking about Jesus, the everlasting light. And we know that these days people are trying to change and say the Old Testament does not matter. What the Old Testament says is actually made clear or made plain or comes into effect in the New Testament. And so we need both the Old Testament and the New Testament. There is teaching that is going on in town today that you need only the words of Jesus you lay a very good foundation from the Old Testament, and it is very, very helpful. And that is why we say the Bible is one book. Actually, the original Bible, and if you get a revised standard version, you may find only chapters, but it may not, you may not find even that subdivision. Every book, it just runs it through. It may not have so much division or subsections like other versions have put it. When we are talking about the Messiah, when we are talking about the everlasting light, now it is important that we get to understand when we are talking about a Messiah. Messiah is simply a Hebrew word. And the original word was actually Mashiach. And Mashiach simply means the anointed one or the chosen one. That when we went astray, that when we missed the mark, Jesus had to choose one. I mean, God had to choose a one for all sacrifice. And that is how Jesus came into the scene. And so Messiah is from the original Hebrew word, Mashiach, meaning the anointed one or the chosen one. While in Greek, it is Christos, which we then translate Christ. It is the same word as Messiah. It is the same word as the anointed one. It's the same word as the chosen one. Even when Jesus was the chosen one, we are told that Andrew, you know, Andrew in John chapter 1, verses 14. He said, we have found the Messiah. When Jesus came to the earth to live with us and be our savior, and fortunately, while Andrew and the rest of the disciples said, we have found the Messiah, they had not understood and internalized it fully. Now, it was even worse because the Jews were looking for God still to send a Messiah, even when Jesus had come. There was a cross section of the Jews who were still looking for God to send a Messiah, an anointed or a chosen one. And yet Jesus was with them. Now they had read the Old Testament prophets that promised that God would send a deliverer to save his people. And unfortunately, and if you read Isaiah 42, verse 1, Psalm 6, Isaiah 61, verses 1 to 3, Psalm 16. Psalm 22, 
but we can pick on Isaiah 61 verses 1 to 3 that the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed it. Now, in Isaiah already, there was a prophecy of what Jesus was going to do and what Jesus was going to be like in Isaiah 61 verses 1 to 3. And unfortunately, the Jews expected when they read about the prophecies of how the Messiah would overcome God's enemies, they understood this to mean that he would deliver them from Roman masters. They knew it was going to be a political kingdom. And so they expected God to set up a kingdom on earth. They expected the Messiah to set up a kingdom on earth and a kingdom in which they would be rulers and in which they would not be ruled. So they expected to take the lead. And so what happened? They overlooked the Messiah's spiritual role as a deliverer from sin. They overlooked the Messiah's spiritual role as a deliverer from Satan. And they did not understand that his kingdom was spiritual and not political. As a result, very few were prepared to accept Jesus as the promised Messiah. And so he didn't fit their ideas of what a Messiah would be. And so most of them ended up missing the mark. Some, however, saw beneath the surface and recognized Jesus as the long-awaited Messiah. God is anointed as the chosen one. And why anointed and why the Messiah and why the chosen one? To save us from sin. It became their purpose to share this wonderful insight with others as he closed in his gospel. The Apostle John summarizes the message he had been trying to get across. John chapter 20, verses 30 and 31. John summarized it and he said, Truly, Jesus did many other things, signs in the presence of his disciples. I'm reading John 20, verse 30 and 31. The God, the John says in the gospel, and he truly Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. That is how John chose it to summarize it. John chapter 20 verse 30 and 31, that he did many things as a Messiah, and he did many things so that if you and I believe in him, we will have life in his name. And unfortunately, there are many people who have denied it today. We have them even in our church. We have them even in our families. We have them even in our places of work. We have them in our neighborhood, and we have them in the positions of leadership and in the positions of responsibility. And so once we miss Jesus, we miss the light. And once we miss Jesus, we miss salvation. And once we miss Jesus, we miss eternal life. That is the tragedy. And may God have mercy on his people. And when we miss Jesus, we live in the darkness and in deep, deep darkness. Where there is no light, automatically there is a darkness. We are all familiar with the Lord shedding in Uganda. We are all familiar with the night. If there is no electricity, if there is no torch, if there is no lamp, if there is no candle, if there is no solar, we are all familiar that once the night comes, it becomes dark. If there is no, no stars, if there are no stars in the sky and there is no moon to light the sky, we know we can be in the darkness. Just figure it out that it is night. The clouds have covered the sky. And sometimes you can't even see one meter ahead. And so what does the Bible say about darkness? Where there is no Jesus, 
there is no salvation. Where there is no Jesus, there is no forgiveness of sin. Where there is no Jesus, it is a darkness. What does the Bible say about darkness? Darkness is termed as evil. Darkness is termed as wickedness. Darkness is termed as gloom. Where there is no light, it is evil, it is wicked, and it is gloom. And so let me say two things from the Bible, that there can be spiritual darkness, and spiritual darkness can, is because of the original sin that Adam committed. And because of that spiritual darkness, we live in a rebellion. And because of that spiritual darkness, we live outside the love of God. And because of that spiritual darkness, we propagate works of Satan. And we become agents of Satan. We become children of, lie, of a liar, Satan, and instead of being children of light. Two, the Bible talks about a darkened heart. In Ephesians chapter 4, verses 18 to 19. Ephesians 4, 18 to 19. We have spiritual darkness, and because of spiritual darkness, you end up with a darkened heart. Ephesians 4, verse 18 and 19 says, they are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality so as to indulge in every kind of impurity and they are full of greed. Very bad state of affairs. And we have seen this in Uganda today. And unfortunately, we have seen this in the church today. Let me give the example of Ukumi Diocese, where fighting has continued. And you know, it is very unfortunate that people's, some people's hearts in the Diocese of Ukumi have become so darkened that they decided the best way is to, the best way is to separate themselves, is to get away from Church of Uganda. And they went ahead and formed their own church. But you know, even after forming their own church, people are saying the leader of that church should have been given a position of a diocesan secretary. The leader of that church should have been accommodated. And yet the very leader, decided to take his grace, decided to take the church to court. The very leader did many other things that I don't want us to talk about here. And now, even after starting his own church, he feels the clergy who are in the Church of Uganda who want to join him, should join him with the structure, the sanctuaries that were built, should join him with the Christians they are leading in particular parishes or churches and should join him with everything. You begin to wonder, where are we headed as a church? If you want to know the level of darkening of hearts, look at the different what the different dioceses have gone through in the election of a new bishop in preparation of electing of a new bishops to the point that people found it not worthy to follow the canons of the church, but rather to go to the courts of law. I was sharing with some friends two weeks ago that when I looked at the annual crime and traffic offenses report 2022 of the Uganda police force, and I looked at the level of defilement and rape, Cases of defilement and rape that are reported. And friends, when I computed, it translated into 42 children being raped or defiled 
rape or defilement being committed every 42 seconds. Every day, 42, every day, every 42 seconds, there is rape and defilement somewhere in the corner of Uganda. That is how I computed it. And it is terrible. We can name things that are happening and it is unbelievable. Corruption has reached alarming levels. Divisions have reached alarming levels. Divorce and separation among Christians who have hardly spent five years in marriage is alarming. I inquired from one of the judges and the honorable judge told me it is embarrassing to look at the number of Christians who have lined up for divorce. This is the extent of how darkened our understanding has become and is separated from the light of life of God. May God help us. May God have mercy. And the Bible talks about the kingdom of darkness in Romans chapter 13 and verses 12. The Bible talks about the kingdom of darkness. And where the kingdom of darkness rules and where people's hearts are darkened and where there is gloom, where there is spiritual darkness, it means there is either ignorance and rebellion against God. And that is why in Job chapter 10, verses 21 and 22, Job said, but if your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is a darkness. How great is that darkness? I mean, that is Matthew chapter 6, verse 23. Matthew chapter 6, verse 23. If your eyes are unhealthy, your whole body is full of darkness. In other words, if the light within you is darkness, how great. And so we see great darkness among people today. And unfortunately, even those who call themselves the children of God, and you know, people of high standing in the community, people of high standing in the church, people of high standing in this nation. And so we find people have lived in and chosen ignorance. The Bible says the people who walked in the darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of deep darkness, on them light has shown. So even when we talk about gloom, even when we talk about darkness that has filled the earth that we experience every day, there is a hope in Jesus Christ that even in the darkness, and that is why the Bible says while we were still sinners, Christ died. The righteous for the unrighteous. In other words, the light gave up for darkness so as to translate and transform darkness into light. While we were still sinners, Christ died, the righteous for the unrighteous, so that we may all have redemption, we may all receive salvation, so that we may all become the children of God. Where there is darkness, there is ignorance, there is gloom. Where there is darkness, there is death. And Job 10, verse 21 and 22, he said, Before I go to the place of no return, to the land of gloom and utter darkness, to the land of deepest night of utter darkness, and in this order, where even the light is like darkness. When we choose darkness, when we choose rebellion instead of light, instead of choosing salvation in Christ Jesus, we live in a place of no return. We end up in a land of gloom. We end up in utter darkness. We end up in the light of deepest night, utter darkness and disorder. And with the Bible in Job 10 verse 22, at the end it says, even the light is like a darkness. No wonder today some people have called good bad. 
No wonder today some people have said what we are supposed to do, we should not do it. When we choose darkness, we choose misery and adversity. When we choose darkness, anything else other than Jesus Christ, we choose misery and adversity. And the Bible says, some sat in the darkness, in utter darkness, prisoners suffering in iron chains because they rebelled against God's commands and despised the plans of the Most High. So he subjected them to bitter labor. They stumbled and there was no one to help. Psalm 107. Psalm 107 verses 10 to 12. Look at Psalm 107 verses 10 to 12. And the Bible painted a picture. Maybe this could be a picture of the children of Israel in slavery in Egypt. But this is a picture today. We have our own people, and unfortunately, who have chosen slavery, who have chosen a life of misery by going to work in the Middle East. When they don't have any qualification, they have decided to go for this manual jobs. Psalm 107 verses 10 to 12, some sat in the darkness and we have people who have chosen to plan in the darkness, to live in the darkness, to hide in the darkness and they don't know that they are prisoners. Some sat in the darkness, in utter darkness, prisoners suffering in their own chains because they rebelled against God's commands and despised the plans of the Most High. What was the plan of the Most High? Salvation for those who lived in the darkness. Salvation for those who were engulfed by darkness. Salvation to clear darkness from a life. Salvation to clear darkness from a family. Salvation to clear darkness from marriage. Salvation to shed light in offices. Salvation to bring light, unity, and honor in the church of Jesus Christ. And so they despised the plans of the Most High God. And up to today, it is unfortunate that people still despise the salvation plan of the Most High. So he subjected them to bitter labor. They stumbled and there was no one. That is Psalm 107 verse 12. And so there was no one to help. God offered it to us. And for those who denied it, they have missed the mark. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Romans chapter 13, verses 12. The Bible is challenging you and me that the night is over. In other words, God is calling you and me to do away with the darkness. And there are many, the Bible calls them fruitless deeds of darkness because he wants us to live a life of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes I wonder why we take it for granted what God has given us, what God has offered us. Friends, we have just celebrated Easter, reflecting on the death and resurrection of Christ Jesus. And you know, that is all a demonstration that Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is a love relationship and not an ordinary love, this is filial. It is not, it is about agape love. It's about a loving God coming down to look for a sinful soul. That is what Christianity is all about. In Christianity, it is not man looking for God. It is a sinful, it is God 
looking for a sinful man. It is God coming down in Christ Jesus to offer you and me salvation, to offer you and me everlasting light, to offer you and me transformation, to offer you and me life everlasting, to offer you and me an opportunity to become co-workers, joint heirs, and to prove the fact that we are a royal priesthood, and to prove the fact that we are a holy nation, and to prove the fact that we are the chosen and the righteousness of God. May we, friends, embrace light. Romans says, chapter 13, verse 12, night is over, and the day is here. Let me call upon everybody on this call that we need to throw and do away with anything to do with the darkness. Yes. And let's put on the armor of light. Let me say two more things about light and then I conclude. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 15. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 15. If you may quickly flip there. The Bible says, God is light. First John chapter one. Stem say. I I think I didn't get it well. The Bible talks about God being light. I think it is, I think I didn't get it. But the Bible says God is light. And those who live in the light do not live in the darkness. If we believe, if we have faith in God, let's throw away darkness. And it is very easy to hide in the darkness. Most of the bad things are done in the darkness. And many people entice and harm others in the darkness. And many people love to hide in the darkness. Instead of resting, instead of praising God, instead of waiting on God, we hide and we cover up. I went for a mission in one of the schools in the eastern part of Uganda. And friends, it was so good to share with these youngsters about salvation. And you know, they feigned ignorance and they embraced Jesus Christ and they accepted him to become their Lord and personal savior. And they shared and they asked questions and you know, they expressed themselves and said, nobody had ever told us about this. Nobody had ever expressed himself about this. They had been told all kinds of things. And especially during lockdown, many things happened to especially young people. But the, our hope is that God is light. Let's live in God and live in light. Second Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 16. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verses 16. Therefore, we do not lose the heart, even though our outward man is perishing, yet the inward man is being renewed day by day. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Verses 16. That in the darkness, because of the darkness around us, it puts us in a position of hopelessness. And you know, sometimes it is very, very discouraging. But he is gave, giving us hope. But also the Bible says, let your light so shine that others may see Christ in you and so be able 
to glorify your Father in heaven. Let your light shine. Can we purpose from today on as Christians to let our light shine in the way we think, to let our light shine in the way we talk. Let me conclude with the gospel according to St. John. The gospel according to St. John. Chapter 12 from verse 35. John 12 verses from verse 35. Then Jesus said to them, A little while the light is with you. Walk while you have the light, lest the darkness overtake you. He who walks in the darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. These things Jesus spoke and departed and was hidden. During his last days, Jesus challenged his disciples and he told them, walk. While you have the light. And he went ahead to say, you are in danger that darkness can overtake you. I want to bring it to a conclusion here. That many Christians are double dealing. Many Christians are double-minded. And the Bible says I hate, God says I hate double-minded people. Many Christians have decided to follow both darkness and also think that they can live in light. May God help us that from today on, we walk in the everlasting light. In the everlasting light. We walk in the footsteps of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that from today on, we live up to what he expects of us. May the good Lord bless you. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. And I want to thank all of you for tuning in. Let's pray together. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving us the opportunity to share together from your word about Jesus being the everlasting light. May he shed that light in our hearts afresh. May that light become evident where you have blessed us to do business, where you have blessed us to serve you, where you have blessed us in the families. May that light become evident even in your church. And so may that light take over this nation. I thank you and I bless you in Jesus' name. May the good Lord bless you. Thank you very much for listening. Amen. Amen. One who represents them all now, but because they are eating. Yeah. Thank you, Reverend Francis. A God and a Father, the Lord of peace. We thank you for this word that has come to us. We thank you for using your servant to speak to us about the Messiah, if one is the source of life. Father, we worship you and exalt you, our God and our Father. Lord, I pray that you will equip him with everything good for doing your will. That as he ministers, O oh Lord, through you, Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Lord, I pray that you will equip him, O oh Lord, with your word to continue ministering to your people. We bless you, our God and our Father. We exalt you, King of Glory. You yes. alone are mighty. You alone are the most. We worship you and glorify you. We thank you, Lord. We continue that you continue blessing him as he ministers, O oh Lord. Bless his family, O oh God. Provide for him, King of Glory. For, Lord, you have set him apart to minister, King of Glory. Father, we Speak that you give him your word. Equip him, Lord, with everything that he needs to do your will. Oh, Father, you are the greater I am. 
you are the light, the source of light. We bless you, our God and our Father. We exalt you in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, brethren, Psalm 89, verse 15 says, Blessed are those who have learned to acclaim you, who walk in the light of your response. Let us pray that our God and our Father will help us to walk in the light because God is the source of light. And we have learned that when we walk in darkness, we cannot see where we are going. Let us pray that darkness will not overtake us. Father, in the name of Jesus, you are the source of light. This morning we submit your Lordship and ask that you give us the grace not to allow darkness to overtake us, O oh Lord. Lord, take away anything that makes us to walk in the darkness, O oh Lord. King of glory, give us the grace to stand firm because when we are tempted, we walk in the darkness because we look for solutions somewhere else which make us to walk in the darkness. King of glory, we ask that you will help us, give us the grace to stand firm so that we shall continue walking in the light because you have come into the world as light so that whoever believes in you may not remain in darkness. Father, we pray that we shall walk in the light. We pray that we shall believe in you so that we do not remain in darkness. King of glory, we pray that we shall not miss you, Jesus. Because your word in John 12, 46 says, I have come into the world as light so that whoever believes in me may not remain in darkness. Father, in the name of Jesus, take away everything that makes us to miss you. Take away any actions that make us to, me, to miss Jesus, O oh Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask that, Lord, we ask for your divine direction, King of glory. Lord, that we shall not use the flesh to direct us. Because when we are guided by the flesh, we miss you, Jesus. When we are directed by the flesh, we walk in darkness. King of glory, we submit to you and call forth you, the King of kings, to help us, O oh Lord, to walk in the light, the light that you have brought us. Ours is to believe in you, to trust in you, and walk according to your will, and obey you, our God and our Father, King of glory. Let our hearts submit your Lordship. Lord, we pray that we will walk in you, O oh God, because in this world there are so many things that make us run away from you. But this morning, O oh Lord, we ask that you, the King of Kings, you will help us to walk according to your will. Lord, we pray that we shall live a repentant life because without you, we are nothing. Without your word, we are nothing. King of glory, we pray that we shall put aside Acts that make us walk in darkness. Lord, that we shall put on the armor of light. King of glory, we come before you this morning in humility and ask that you give us the grace to put aside activities that make us to walk in darkness. Because when we walk in darkness, we are nothing. We cannot see where we are going. Forgive us, our Heavenly Father, where we have chosen to walk in darkness. Father, Father God Almighty, help us, our God and our King, to do your will. Lord, we pray that we shall learn to walk by means of the Spirit and not by our flesh. Because when we walk in flesh, we walk in darkness. Lord, throw away anything that hinders us 
from walking in the light because Lord God Almighty, darkness and light cannot mix. Today, Lord, we choose to walk in your light because you are holy God. If we choose to believe in you and trust in you, we should walk in righteousness. The enemy attacks us and we walk in darkness. Today, Lord, we frustrate the plans of the enemy to make us walk in darkness and render them powerless in the name of Jesus. We disarm the powers of darkness that redirect us to that devil. Today, Lord, we disarm the enemy that makes us into to walk into darkness. Lord, the love of money has made us to be corrupt. The love of money has made us to murder. The love of money has made us to steal. Lord, that is flesh. Father, will you take away anything that is flesh, anything that makes us walk in darkness? Lord, this morning, we choose to walk in your light because you are the God of light. Lord, we pray that we shall live a life of the Holy Spirit. When we submit our life to to be directed by the Holy Spirit, we walk in the light. King of glory, come down, Lord, we need you. Come down in our families, come down in the church. Lord, your servant has shared an example of Kumi Diocese. Lord, we take authority over Kumi Diocese and call forth the power of your Holy Spirit to rule over the confusion that is in that diocese, to rule over the flesh that is directing those factions that are in that diocese. Lord God Almighty, come, we need you. Brethren, Isaiah chapter 2, verse 5 says, Come, descendants of Jacob, and let us walk in the light of God. Brethren, I pray that from today on, we, the descendants of Jacob, we shall walk in the light of the Lord, because it is the light of the Lord that makes us pure, that makes us righteous. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, we have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen.